Hello, hello, it's Monica from Crafting with Kling Lady and welcome back to my channel. It is time for hashtag FFC Challenge 2023. In October, we're going to create a pop-up front panel card. If you haven't created this card style, this video is for you. Here I'm going to draw all the measurements for all the panels to create the card I'm going to show you in today's video. If you want, you can take a screenshot of all my measurements to create your own version. To create my card base, I'm going to need 12 inches by 6 inches wide card. And that will be the card base, which is super easy to create because all you have to do is to score at 6 inches. And you can also use pre-made card blanks as well. So when this is ready, then I'm going to create my biggest panel which will be the bottom one. And I need six inches by five and a half white card. And first I'm going to score it at half an inch, then two inches, then three and a half and five inches. So I've got half of an inch left here. So here you can see where all the scoring lines go. And that is the easiest way to create the biggest bottom panel. Have you ever created a pop-up front panel card? If you haven't, I really hope you'll give this one a go because it is so much fun to create. So when this panel is ready, then I'm going to create the middle panel, which will measure five inches by four and a quarter. So as you can see, all the measurements will be here and you can take a screenshot of them. So first I need to score it at half an inch for a flap, then one and one quarter, one and one quarter, and then the last panel will be one and a quarter. So the measurements are half of an inch first from the very top, then I'm going to score it at one and three quarters. When this is ready, then I need three inches, and then we are left with four and a quarter. So this is five by four and a quarter. And the smallest panel, the bottom one, or the top one actually, will be four inches by three and a half inch. So I'm going to score it at half an inch, one and a half, two and a half, and then the last one will be three and a half. Super quick and simple. And this way you're going to have three layers to create a birthday or wedding cake for your front panel. Super cool, right? So now you can take a screenshot of all my measurements and let's create our beautiful card. So here I've got my scoring board and I'm going to follow the measurements you just seen. So here is the card panel and this one is 12 by 6 inches. So let's create that score line at 6 inches and I'm going to open it at the bottom. So this way, as you can see, it's going to stand proudly on a flat surface. So now let's create the biggest panel, the bottom. So I've got six inches by five and a half. And as you can see, the measurements are here. So I'm going to score it at half an inch, two inches, then three and a half and five inches. So on the left and on the right, I've got two smaller flaps that will be attached to the cut front. So now let's create the middle panel. And this one is five inches by four and a quarter. Super quick and simple to create a really cool card. So let's create those score lines. So the first scoring line is at half of an inch. When this is ready, I need one and three quarters and then three inches. Super quick and simple, right? So if you've never ever took part in FFC Challenge 2023, I do encourage you to give it a go. As you can see with the smallest panel, I'm going to score it at half an inch, one and a half, two and a half. And now it will be time to fold and burnish all those score lines. And I do encourage you to use a bone folder to do it. This challenge is hosted by Monica Peipemona and every fifth of the month we're going to create a different fancy fold card style for you. If you want to take part in it, all you have to do is to create your project and use that hashtag. All the information is in the description down below. Also, at the end of this video, I'm going 
to link Monica's and Christine's videos as well. And I had a look at their projects and I absolutely love them. So please check them out as well. And this challenge is for fun. So all you have to do is to create your project, use that hashtag and put it on your social media. Now I'm going to have a panel measuring 5 and 5 eighths and I'm going to apply a little bit of color because I decided to go with a little bit of purple today. So I'm going to use my Spectrum Noir ink here and this is pigment ink which means that will dry for a little bit longer than usual ink. So if you want you can heat set it if you want but I just left it and I was pretty careful not to touch it. So now I decided to use one of the design papers from this collection. It is a pretty old one and I always wanted to use it. So today is the day. I couldn't decide which panel I really want to work with but in the end I decided the floral panel and I really think those two colors work so well together. So if you want to take part in this challenge you can also join us on Facebook group and I left the link in the description down below as well because we've got amazing range of crafters taking part in that challenge and I have to admit that the cards you create are simply amazing. So now we can start putting all the elements on our front card and as you can see I'm using my liquid glue just to make sure I can maneuver the elements if I make a mistake. So now at this point I decided to add a little bit of texture so I'm going to use that embossing folder from Made to Surprise by Sam Kalkoff. If you're interested in any of the products I use in today's video you can check the description down below. So I'm going to emboss all those three panels and as you can see I'm going to leave one of the flaps and I don't need to emboss it because I'm going to attach it to the front of the card. So as you can see that's how it looks like when it's embossed and if you want to create your own birthday or wedding card like in this style I do encourage you to either use any embossing folder from your stash or use a scoring board to add a little bit of dimension. Now I decided to use my corner punch to create that oval corner and I think that what really makes a difference especially if you want to create a cake style card. So when this is ready I'm going to do it exactly the same on two other panels and as you can see we already scored all those panels so it is very easy to fold those and if you use the punch and this card is heavyweight which is 300 gsm so it was a little bit hard to use the punch but in the end I managed to do it. You can also use your scissors as well, especially if you make a mistake. So now it is time for the smaller panel to do exactly the same with the corners. And at this point I thought I really like the color palette at the front of my card and I really want to use the same color on the cake. So what I did, I used exactly the same ink pad from Spectrum Noir and I'm going to add that color on the embossed panels. And I think that what really makes a difference. You can also use some alcohol markers as well or just leave them white and that will be perfectly fine. So here I'm going to apply the ink and you have to be super super gentle. All you have to do is to apply the ink very gently and follow your pattern because we don't want that ink on the white background, right? Only where the embossed elements are. So when these panels are ready then it will be time to adhere all those elements on our card front. And I do encourage you to start with the biggest panel first. But at this point I thought if I want to create a wedding or birthday cake I want to embellish it even more. So from my stash I took that border die but if you don't have border dies you can also use some ribbons from your stash and that will be perfectly fine. So here I'm going to apply those border die cuts using my one and only liquid glue. However as I told you you can also add ribbons and that will be perfectly fine. To be honest I'm not really sure which company is this die from because I had border dies mixed all together in one box. But to be honest it is super simple to create that card style. 
So if you'd like to take part in that hashtag FFC Challenge 2023, please feel free. And please also check Monica's and Christine's videos as well, because their inspiration is pretty cool. So if you haven't joined us on our Facebook group, I do encourage you to do so, because you can check so many amazing projects from other crafters as well. And the next video will be on the 5th of November. And if you want to find out what is the card style, please check the description down below. So as you can see, you can always get rid of the excess of any ribbon or die cuts here. Just turn your cut over and use your scissors. Super quick and simple. So now let's create that pop-up element. So I'm going to apply the glue at the flap and I'm going to line it up with the bottom of my card. And now you have to be super patient because you want to make sure that the glue is totally set before you move on to the next step. So now I'm going to do it with the top panel here, or I should say flap, and you can always use your scoring tool as well. And this will make a massive difference. If you want, you can also use some tape here and that will be perfectly fine. So as you can see, we have a lot of dimension here and it is time for our middle layer of the cake. So as you can see with the bottom panel, which is one and a quarter of an inch, I'm going to adhere it exactly to the bottom layer. And then with the top flap, I'm going to attach it to the cut front. Super quick and simple. So as you can see, you can use this card for weddings, wedding anniversaries, and also birthdays. In the end, when I put happy birthday on it, I left some space so I can always put the name of the recipient if I want to personalize this project. So if you've never ever created a pop-up front panel card, I do encourage you to give it a go because it is so much fun and actually pretty quick to make as well. And I'm Pretty sure you do have some beautiful design papers in your stash that you can use to create your project. And also, as you can see, I'm creating a pop-up birthday or wedding cake here. <laughs> I'm really interested. What is your favorite cake? Because I absolutely love red velvet cake. It is my favorite. If you do have your favorite, please let me know in the comments down below. So now it will be time to embellish the card even more. So I decided to use some gold mirror card. So the sentiment will stand on a beautiful card, especially with those purples here. And actually, I really like the combo of white and off-white together. What do you think about it? Please let me know in the comments down below. So when this is ready, then it will be the best job ever, which means to choose some gems and pearls for this card. And I got a combination. I've got some very pale purple gems and beautiful pearls as well, because I think they add so much to the elegance. If you agree with me, please let me know in the comments down below. So as you can see, the cut is complete. It has a lot of dimension. And what's really good about it, it stands proudly on the flat surface. You've got plenty of space to write your message inside. And it folds flat in 6 by 6 inches envelope. I really hope you'll feel inspired and create your own pop-up front panel card. And don't forget about that hashtag FFC Challenge 2023. And October is pop-up front panel cut. And don't forget to check our Facebook group. Here you can see Monica's and Christine's beautiful pop-up front panel cuts. And if you want to take part in it, create your project. We absolutely want to see it. Have a wonderful day and see you in my next video. Bye for now. Happy crafting!